Hey everybody, it's Sajad Stealth, Amazon FBA. If you're looking for an easy to follow Helium 10 tutorial, then you're definitely in the right place. I'm gonna show you some easy ways to find products and list them on Amazon using software like Helium 10 without wasting any time and making a lot of mistakes. Finding a product to sell can of course be difficult. Optimizing your listing is harder still. But don't worry because today I'm gonna share with you how Helium 10 will actually help in the process. Now, let's get on to the Helium 10 dashboard. This is what it looks like. Now, I've been a partner with Helium 10 for a long time, for a few years now, and I'm able to offer you an exclusive giveaway. I've asked them to actually help out some of my students and also some of my YouTube viewers. So what they're going to do is allow me to give you voucher codes where you will get access to Helium 10 completely for free. Now I've got three options. You can either get the diamond plan free for one month, you can get the platinum plan free for one month, or the Chrome extension completely for free for a full year. So it's your choice which one you would like. Now to enter this competition, simply hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to my channel, and also comment below Helium 10 coupon code. And then in the next video, I'll basically select at random who has won that competition. And don't worry, I'll be doing a lot more of these on this channel as well. And if you're not interested in that competition and you just want to sign up with some discount, I've got new Helium 10 discount codes for 2021. That will be the first couple of lines of the description. I'll put it in the comment section as well, so you can already get a discount on their different packages. So let's get started with the tutorial today. Now to use Helium 10, first of all, we have to understand how things work on Amazon. So let's get on to amazon.com for this example. Now let's say for argument's sake, we're searching for a basic product. Let's say it's a coffee cup and see what Amazon kind of auto suggests here because these are the most searched kind of niches related to coffee cups. So let's click on this one, it sounds interesting. So it's coffee cup warmer for desk auto shut off. And we can see immediately scrolling down what this is. It's basically just a coffee cup warmer, a nice cool product. And let's say this is the product that we wanted to sell on Amazon. So one thing is finding the product. The next step is within this niche, trying to determine the best sub niche. So how will we differentiate? Shall we do the white one? Shall we do the uh, black colored one? Shall we do one that's higher power, lower power? How long should the shutoff be? Should there be many other functions on this? What should be the size of this particular product? Is it easy for me to source? Is it too heavy, too light? How much is it gonna cost to ship? What is the price? Uh, let's click on one of these. Now you've heard me there just spew off a whole set of words. And if you're getting confused, these are just the things that go through my mind when I'm selecting a product to sell. These are the things I need to consider. And once I've determined all of those things, then I obviously contact my supplier and that's where we'll go to alibaba.com in just a minute. And then we have to list this product. We have to list this product with the right keywords. Like you can see a coffee, mug, warmer. Even in the other areas like the bullet features, we need to make sure our important keywords are here. Now this particular listing, the seller hasn't done that very well because I, I can hardly see the word coffee cup uh, warmer mentioned anywhere in these bullet points. They're missing a trick there. You should absolutely mention them and that will actually help you in terms of ranking your product. But anyway, we'll get onto that in just a minute. So we've determined now to sell on Amazon, what we have to do is find the product, differentiate, source the product, usually from the Far East, list the product here to sell and then actually promote the product to get those initial sales. Either you use sponsored ads, Amazon PPC, or some other method. Now what's great is Helium 10 will help you with every single step. So once you signed up with Helium 10, and you can see here on the dashboard, if I scroll on the left, I've got the home icon there. So I've got home, but I also got product research, keyword research, listing optimization, and then operation. So let's just quickly go through these. So product research, let's just click on that. And you can see we've got black box and trendster. And the other thing not mentioned here is we've got Helium 10's Chrome extension, and I'll show you how to use that uh, in a simple way in just a minute. Furthermore, that's to find the product. Then we've got keyword research, and I love how Helium 10 actually lay everything out, which is now why it's my preferred tool to use for Amazon sellers. Keyword research, click on this. You've got Cerebro and Magnet. More on that in just a minute, but these will actually help you when it comes to listing the product. They can sometimes help with product research as well, but mainly I'm using them to find the most relevant keywords for this coffee, uh, coffee cup warmer that I'm looking to source. So those are the tools I'll be using there. Then you can see a listing optimization. Now, usually 
Sometimes I would use scribbles, but usually it's just Frankenstein I want to use. And the reason for that is, let's say with one of the other tools, we've got 10,000 keywords for this product. I want to use a tool that can kind of condense that down so I know what to put in my listing and what to put in my backend. So when I actually list the product to sell on Amazon, Amazon actually asks me, what keywords do you want to rank for? That's why I would use Frankenstein. Don't have to worry about the others. Let's click on operations. Again, most of these you don't need to worry about. The main one is follow up here. So the email automation tool. And this is great because this is how we actually chase up customers to make sure they're okay with the product that they had ordered and also to kindly request for some feedback for a review. Because remember on amazon.com or amazon.co.uk or wherever you're selling, you need to get customer reviews and you need to be better than your other sellers in your niche at getting reviews and getting real reviews faster. Amazon is clamping down massively on scam and fake reviews at the moment. So if you can find ways to do it organically and get real reviews, but at a faster rate than your competitor, then you're going to take over that niche. It's as simple as that. Finally, when we scroll further down, we've got analytics, keyword tracker, market tracker. Again, I don't mess around with any of those. That's not the main reason I personally use Helium 10. I then skip to marketing and automate your PPC. That's the other area where you can use Helium 10. You can use them to help you with the Amazon PPC. But again, I'm just being honest with you, it's not a necessary tool. In all of my videos, whenever I discuss any anything related to selling on Amazon, I'm always honest in which software I use and how I actually use it. And if there are things on here that I don't use, I'm going to tell you that, to be honest, because otherwise I'm not really in a position to recommend it. And if I found Helium 10 was no good and another software was better, I would recommend that one, to be honest with you. But Helium 10 is very good. And actually, to be honest, compared to a lot of the other types of software on the market, including Jungle Scout, they've actually improved their software more than any other. And its ease of use is another reason I like it as well. Now, the great thing I'm going to show you today is on Alibaba, there is a brand new Helium 10 tool that you can actually use. Now, this has just been released and Helium 10 have been in contact with me and they've asked me to promote this to people who view my videos and I will discuss it. But how useful it is, is up for debate at the moment. But remember, it's an early stage of the process when you consider new software. So how does it actually work? Well, let's try it right now on Alibaba. So basically what you can do is you can just type into here the same search. So for example, coffee cup warmer. And what I'm expecting to see hopefully is similar types of products. Yes, I can see them here. Similar types of products to what we had just seen on amazon.com. So this is great. Now, what are the limitations with Alibaba or what are the kind of uh, annoyances, uh, shall we say. So one thing that I don't like, because Amazon's very easy. When you're on amazon.com, you can filter in various different ways. You can rank by number of reviews, etc., And then you can use your Chrome extension to delve into it further. But the problem with Alibaba is it's not easy to filter through all of these different listings. Firstly, to find the real manufacturers. And secondly, to find the kind of best prices. Thirdly, to find whether they actually have stock items at the moment. Perhaps how long they may take to actually ship your product. And that is annoying. And what Helium 10, I'm guessing, are trying to do is make that easier for sellers, which is great, but can it actually be done? So let me just discuss the Chrome extension quickly. So we were looking at this coffee mug warmer. Now, the way the Chrome extension works, if you're using Google Chrome, is you'll see here in the top bar. So let me just show you. I've got here the Helium 10 Chrome extension. And here, if I click on X-Ray, Amazon Product Research, I just click on that. Suddenly, I can see all of the listings and how well they're doing. But as I've discussed on previous tutorials, tutorials, I ignore pretty much everything at the top. So success store, total revenue. I'm not, I'm not interested in that because I'm looking for proof of concept. I want listings with uh, preferably lower reviews that are doing reasonably well and ranking their product on this first page. Why is that? Well, when I'm launching my product, which is going to be similar to one of these, I want to know that it, there's a potential for it to do well. I don't really care how the overall niche is doing because sometimes you get unrelated products as well in this same search. This is just data off Amazon search. It doesn't mean necessarily every single product here is a coffee cup warmer for desk or tohu shut off. But you can see it's a great way to filter through, have a look at the revenue, the sales figures, get an idea of the FBA fees because obviously we need to cal uh, calculate a, our profit margin because obviously we need to calculate our profit margins. We can also see the price point and we can also see here not only brand names but whether they're an FBA seller, whether it's Amazon selling this product or if it's MFN, etc. So what is this new software that Helium 10 has released, which could be potentially a game changer or maybe just more noise or something else that you don't really need. Well, it's here. 
source on alibaba.com do you see that button there if you click on that this search now you see is actually from alibaba you can see the names of the companies how long they've been trading star rating where they are for example china but it could be somewhere else it could be india pakistan it could be japan thailand many many other countries because uh, one kind of misconception is that uh, alibaba.com is just a chinese website so if you're ordering from there you're ordering from china that's not true at all there are many many other countries that are listing their products there on alibaba.com. It's basically just a collection of manufacturers and trading companies. Now, what you can do here is you you can see here at the top price points, MOQ, so the minimum number you need to order, vendor rating, but also if you click on advanced filters, what's really cool is you can actually select the supplier country, even the vendor type, manufacturer, trading company, etc. how long they've been trading. So if you want very, very experienced manufacturers or trading companies, you can click here on seven years. So that's really cool. So if we actually just randomly select a few things, so let's click on China, we just want manufacturer, um, just seven years plus, and well, let's just click on price point as well. Let's just put something like 12 there as a max and click on apply. The funny thing is when you do this, it comes up with no results found. So let's change it around. So let's click on five years, maybe manufacturer and trading company. Let's just try that, click on apply. Now we've got 14 products related and we can click here on load more results and you can scroll down and have a quick look. Remember, we're still here on the amazon.com page. We've got the Chrome extension behind us. So it could potentially be a quick way to do things. And what you can do if you click on one of these, it actually opens up that company in a new tab. So this is great because it can actually potentially save a bit of time. The other thing is you can just click view more on alibaba.com. So it opens up the same thing and you can see here price less than 12, but because some of the filters don't actually work on alibaba.com, suddenly you've got a lot more products. So it's not filtered down well. And like I said, that's the, uh, that's what I think Helium 10 were going for. It's very, very difficult to filter through hundreds and hundreds of listings on Alibaba. But let me warn you about one thing. This is the problem. And this is the limitation with any product research software, for example. Look, the software is not magic. It's not going to suddenly find you some magical gold nugget product that nobody else has come across. It's not going to suddenly boost your listing to 10x more sales. A lot of the process here, when it comes to selling on Amazon, you have to do manually. And then you have to track what you're doing, see what works, what doesn't work. It's the same for listing. It's actually the same for PPC as well. There's no magical tool that will do it for you. It's quantitative, but also qualitative analysis. So on here, this, the problem with these filters is you might be missing out some really good manufacturers, or you're just missing out lots of people altogether, or the way they've described their company is not correct. And the really big problem is this MOQ price vendor rating. Look, the, the thing is, what, what I always explain when I'm teaching my students, and even here, uh, teaching you on YouTube is let's say we were on this listing and you can see some guide prices here. When you actually contact the supplier, this is never the price. It's rarely the actual price that they're going to give you. The price could be much, much better. It could be much, much worse. The MOQ, the minimum uh, order required for this particular, let's say, manufacturer trading company, they might say you need to order a thousand. But when you contact them, you might be able to get away with a hundred. These uh, these manufacturers, if you imagine a factory, and what I've got, actually got it is a random picture of a factory to kind of illustrate the point, is they're constantly changing um, the, the designs of their products, how long they've been selling a particular product for as wholesale. They might be introducing a new design, but the, the time you contact them, they may have been running that same design for two years. So they may have thousands of pieces of that product on the shelf. They may be happy to just give you a hundred. They may not require a thousand or two thousand if you're happy to buy their stock item and you don't need to add branding. You don't know that. Or perhaps for the one you're looking for, it might take them six months just to manufacture it from the new molds, etc. You don't know that until you actually contact them. So the price may be a lot different to what you are actually seeing quoted. And this is the problem with any tool that will use data from Alibaba. So when we go back to this Helium 10 tool here, this is the problem. None of these prices are gonna be accurate anyway. So just keep that in mind. If it helps you with the filtering process, much like this Chrome extension, then that's fantastic. But as long as you know that these revenue figures and these sales figures are not gonna be perfect. They're not gonna be 100% accurate because how can they be? Any of these coffee uh, mug warmers the number of sales they make on a day-to-day -day basis change, it fluctuates. How can it be the exact same number every single day? It doesn't work that way. Now, the next part of the tool, I'll just show you quickly. Same search, coffee cup warmer. If you go up to the Chrome extension this time, you'll see a new button, launch Alibaba demand analyzer. Click on that. And this is very interesting. I've not seen anything kind of like this before. So basically you select your marketplace here. So let's go back to amazon.com. And then what it gives you is a total revenue figure, average revenue, uh, keywords related 
related to what we're looking for, search volume, uh, word frequency. This is interesting. This potentially could add a little bit of value because also it shows you what people are actually searching for. And you might be able to use this to kind of change how you search for example, not only on Amazon.com, but also on Alibaba.com. Personally, I'm still playing around with this tool, so I will do another update on this channel. And again, just make sure you're subscribed and turn on the bell icon, so if I do any new tutorials, you will actually get notified of them. But anyway, just getting back to the tutorial. So, let's go on to one of the other tools that they have. So I'm here again on Amazon.com, and this is a reverse ASIN lookup. This is one method to find the appropriate keywords. Now, what we need to do is put a product ASIN here. And ASIN is basically the code number Amazon identifies for a particular product. Very easy to find. So click randomly on one of these uh, coffee mug warmer listings. For example, one way to do it is just use the Chrome extension again. I mean, they have this ASIN number anyway on each Amazon listing, so you don't need Helium 10 for this to get an ASIN number, but just copy uh, one of these, enter it in here. Don't, don't click anything else, just click on get keywords. So you can see now it started a search for that particular ASIN number and related keywords. Okay, so that's done. Scroll down and you'll see 12,619 keywords. <laughs> this is the issue. That's a lot of keywords, but very easily we can rank this, for example, by search volume or in a few other different ways. And all we're doing here is we're taking the most important keywords, like for example, mug warmer for desk, which has a search volume six and a half thousand. And we can actually incorporate that into our listing. So let me open this listing. And then what I would want to do is put in various areas here, that particular keyword. So you can see this is just coffee warmer, but we can add that particular keyword phrase. We can even consider if it's a kind of highly searched keyword, adding it in our title as well. There's a reason why you see these titles with lots and lots of different random words all bundled up together, like auto shut up, water, milk, cocoa tea. I mean, this doesn't make any sense as a sentence. Coffee warmer, plate for cocoa tea, water, milk. The reason they've done that is because people are searching for oh, tea warmer, milk warmer, etc. They're searching for these words. That's why they're in there. That's why Helium 10 is great to use. Now let's have a look at the other tool, Frankenstein. So you can see it here on the left, listing optimization, Frankenstein. This is what it looks like. Again, it looks a little bit complicated, but it's very simple. You're copying and pasting random keywords into here. And then what it will do is just churn out the keywords without any duplicates, all converted to lowercase with just spaces in between. And that's what you want because that's what you're going to tell Amazon you want to rank for. And there are a few ways you can actually get these keywords, but here's one way. You just, it's that same ASIN search that we actually did before. You can see here the word frequency, the most common kind of words used. So a few ways you can do it, but one way is just to export all of this data. And you've got an option there to export to Frankenstein. And you can see we're actually over the limit there, but let's continue that. All these different phrases, so many, many tens of thousands of uh, characters there. And let's just see what happens. So let's click on process. And you can see they've actually reduced it down to just 1700 words. Now, there's a lot less than that you can actually use on Amazon. And as I say, in, in another tutorial, I'll explain to you exactly how to do it. So you meet the maximum limit required for Amazon and how to determine which one of these kind of words or phrases is the most important to actually use. But again, a great feature on Helium 10. And I'm gonna briefly touch on email uh, follow-up. So basically when somebody orders uh, one of these products, let's get back on a listing. Let's say you order one of these. If you're an Amazon customer, you may have noticed sometimes the seller actually communicates with you, send you an email asking for feedback and also asking you to contact them if there's anything wrong with your order. The reason they do that is because we do not want negative feedback. We want positive feedback, preferably five stars. That's the point. Amazon's whole platform was built. One, one of the biggest things and the way it differentiated from everybody else was the fact that it had this kind of feedback score and people could actually read reviews. Nowadays, everybody is doing that. So with this uh, automation, this is an example one here for you. What you can do, for example, after one day, you can send them an email, find out if there's any issues. After a few more day, days, then you can actually ask them for a review. And you can set this up very easily on Helium 10. Again, I'll do a separate video on that, so this one is not too long, but it's very, very easy to set up and it's very, very useful. You absolutely, I don't know why people on YouTube are saying you don't get reviews from this. You get a lot more reviews relative to not doing anything to follow up your customers. A lot of Amazon customers are opted out of any of this kind of marketing from sellers. Yes, that's absolutely true, but you can still get a lot more reviews than if you didn't do that. And if you're careful about the way you write your copy in that email, so what you actually ask of the customer, not only will you be within Amazon's terms of service, but you can really push them to kind of 
of leave you a review using a few kind of sales tactics, but it works very, very well. By the way, if you do want an in-depth tutorial just on email kind of automation alone, just mention that in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to enter the free Helium 10 software giveaway, just enter in the comment section below Helium 10 coupon code, and I'll make sure you're entered for that. There's also the Amazon PPC section as well, but again, I don't wanna make this uh, video too long, so I'm not gonna cover that here. But I'll leave you with one thing, because you're probably watching this and you're thinking, well, look, Amazon, it, it seems too difficult. Trying to understand and get familiar with this software is gonna take too long. But let me ask you one thing. Let's say you're preparing to do, uh, for example, a 10k run or a marathon is something you know one of your new year's resolutions if you did that one thing you'll never ever do is break the world record in the marathon and you don't need to you might not have the genetics to be able to do that you know you're not been practicing your whole life you're not a marathon runner that's not what you do so right now if you run a marathon well, you'll probably walk it like I would walk it and it would take me two, three days probably to complete. Maybe eight or nine hours if I was a reasonable level of fitness. But my point is with the training and slowly with time, you can get that time down significantly. So for example, it's not only if you run every single day, you'll improve. It's also what shoes do you wear? How often should you train so you don't get sore? What's the breathing technique you should use whilst running? What's it, what is the correct running technique? How far should you actually lean forward when you're running? How large should your steps be? How high should you kick back? And then there's pacing. How should you pace it? Run hard for the first one mile, then slow the next mile? What is my point with all of this? My point is you have to be patient when you're learning a new skill. It takes time to familiarize yourself with selling on Amazon. Be patient. Consider investing in your training if you want to and you have the financial capacity to do that. I run a very comprehensive Amazon training program. You'll see a link to that and a special New Year's offer at the moment I have in the description section below. But even if you're not able to do that right now, watch some free tutorials, for example, here on YouTube. Have a look through my channel. I have lots and lots of content there. It's all up to date and a lot of it very easy to follow. But don't think you'll be able to invest in Amazon and then within a few weeks, you'll be making massive returns. That's not the point of this. It's a long-term business. I always repeat this on my videos, but I want to remind you of that here. So that's it. Thanks for listening and I'll be back with another tutorial very soon.